What created this stunning geological oddity in Australia? This is the story of the Organ Pipes, a columnar basalt formation in Victoria, Australia. Through millions of years these rock formations were exposed to the world, but how did they form in the first place? The answer lies in fiery volcanic eruptions, but it doesn't stop there. The size and length of these pipes indicates a story of voluminous lava flows, and we'll be looking on magnetics to see where these lava flows came from and what volcanoes released them. The story of the organ pipes begins at a time when the land looked very different than it does today. An ancient waterway flowed through this region. Its origin was likely hundreds of millions of years old, where it flowed unimpeded throughout time. That all changed 7 million years ago, when Victoria became the site of tremendous volcanic activity. The cause of this volcanic activity lies in a magmatic hotspot that Australia has slowly been moving north over for the past 33 million years. Beginning in Queensland, these volcanic eruptions occurred further and further south as Australia moved north. Volcanism occurred in New South Wales, and then, 7 million years ago, its fiery reach gripped Victoria. So are these volcanoes extinct or dormant? The answer to that question is a constant debate amongst geologists. In reality, they are likely to be dormant rather than extinct, as the last volcanic eruption linked to the hotspot occurred within the past 5,000 years. But back to the ancient river. Geologists believe it was choked out of existence within the past million years, which is a stone's throw away in geological terms. Hundreds of volcanoes roared to life during this time, and the ancient river became enveloped by fast flowing lava. It must have been a sight of terror for the animals alive back then. Lava pouring into waterways that they drank from causing explosions as the water contacted the lava. So much lava was released it's believed to have buried the river in up to 70 metres worth of basalt. This picture of a signpost in the organ pipe speaks to its geological origin, but it's clear that the geologists at the time did not have access to the magnetic maps that we have today, as they mention Mount Holden as being one of the volcanoes that formed the organ pipes. This is incorrect. I made a video on Mount Holden and a link to that will be in the description. This is the distance between the organ pipes and Mount Holden. When we look at magnetics, we can see that there were volcanoes far closer to the organ pipes that released flowing basalt. The flows can be seen on the magnetic images as basalt is an iron rich rock, and thus the magnetics give a great indication of the volcanic vent locations and the direction of the flows. As a side note, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button to help YouTube recommend it to others. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of when we upload. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, only if you have the means of course, and you can find that both in the description and in a pinned comment down below. So how were the organ pipes formed? Well their formation is due to a major volcanic event that released copious amounts of lava. So much lava was released that it accumulated en masse. This accumulation led to the slow cooling of the lava that was at the lower levels of the flow. As the top levels rapidly cooled, the lava trapped beneath was forced to cool at a much slower rate, leading to the formation of columnar basalt. So if it isn't already clear, columnar basalt is formed through the cooling and contraction of basaltic lava. As the lava cools, it begins to solidify and contract. This cooling process starts at the surface and gradually moves inward. The pattern of cracking typically results in hexagonal shapes, although other polygonal shapes can also occur. The hexagonal columns form because this shape allows for the most efficient packing of the cracks. The columns are generally vertical, orientated perpendicular to the cooling surface. The size of the columns can vary depending on the rate of cooling. Slower cooling tends to produce larger columns, while faster cooling rates produce smaller columns. So it becomes clear that the amount of lava released during one single eruption was so voluminous that it created a very slow cooling of the lava trap beneath the surface. When the lava flows choked out the ancient waterways, new creeks and rivers had to be constructed. At first this would have been a slow process, as water from rains would have dammed up at first, only to slowly carve its way into the basaltic rock at any low points that were present. Eventually this gave birth to the waterway here, known as Jackson's Creek. Over time, Jackson's Creek carved through the basalts and revealed the spectacular geological formation that we now call the organ pipes. There are several areas where the original ground that was laid down during the Upper Ordovician to Rudanian period outcrops. This was a time that spans from approximately 458.4 million years ago to 443.4 million years ago, back when Victoria was a deep sea. 
Siltstone and sandstone were eroded from the west and carried out into the once deep ocean prior to this region's uplift above the salty waters. And these rocks lay underneath the basalt in certain areas, whilst in others they outcrop alongside the basalt. In areas that weren't covered by immense lava flows as Jackson's Creek slowly meandered its way through this newly shaped land. But there's one more geological oddity that's present at Jackson's Creek, the Rosette Rock. We'll look into its fascinating formation in the next video, so if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of its release. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.